Well, it's never too early to celebrate Halloween, especially if you're on the Strip. Well, since Halloween is during the week, the festivities start this weekend. Fox 5's Cassie Milner is live at the Link Promenade. Yeah, that's right. As you can hear, things are getting a little bit spooky here at the Link Promenade. It's to be expected. A lot of fun and spooky things happening here tonight. You're actually taking a live look at a brand new show and it's called The Witching Hour. In it, you're going to see a cast of witches. They're going to use a little bit of magic and, of course, get you into the spirit using uh, song and plenty of dance. Now, from now until Halloween, you can actually see The Witching Hour every night, starting at the top of the hour at 8 o'clock, then again at 9, 10, and 11. And, of course, a good thing about it is it's free, and it has it's a great opportunity for the whole family to come out. We talked with the show's producer, Rebecca O'Hara. She tells us that this Vegas experience has a little bit of something for everyone. And then we have lots of options. We have the 8 and 9 p.m. shows are family-friendly, and then the 10 and 11 p.m. shows are a little more risque for their adults who want to come but otherwise it's lots of fun great music um great costumes great great dancing now there's also going to be a few opportunities at the link for you to also take part in a few other halloween activities there's actually a family friendly trick-or-treat event it's happening on halloween and on november 1st there's going to be a day of the dead celebration also happening at eight o'clock October 31st. We know it as Halloween, but anciently, even from antiquity, before the Christian church was established, this day was known as Samhain, or Summer's End, celebrated from the sunset of October 31st to sunrise November 1st. Now the ancient Druids of Ireland would celebrate this day and the, even of France and Britain they would celebrate this day in order to please their two main gods their two main deities the sun god and the god of the dead Satan himself now what ended up happening is that they indoctrinated others and infiltrated and began to teach that on this day the dead demons witches goblins every scary creature would come out on this day and would haunt would harass and even torture individuals who would not give them sweet delicious offerings treats fruits vegetables any type of sweet offerings that they could give or be wise enough to disguise themselves as the dead themselves in order to play around and not be haunted and harassed themselves. Now as time went on, even into the 8th century, Pope Gregory III said this is a day that should be celebrated as a day for the dead. And years later, Pope Gregory IV said that all Christians must keep this day, even a holy day. Halloween became a holiday or a holy day set apart for an evil use. You know, Halloween actually dates back to the first century AD. It was a Celtic pagan holiday that was originated in Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, Northern England, and Northern France. And it was believed that um, the spirits would come alive or come back to life on November 1st. So the people uh, would actually, the day before, prepare to um, give gifts to the spirits that they would interact with them. And if they didn't, then the spirits would um, play tricks on them. So that's where we get October 31st as a pagan holiday. 
Um, but the Bible says the dead know not anything. The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. So it's really spiritualism. Uh, it's, it, it stems from witchcraft, and it's a pagan holiday. It has no merit in the Bible whatsoever. Uh, experience. How has uh, Halloween affected my life as a child? Well, growing up, I lived in various places. I was born in Jacksonville, Florida, and we started going trick-or-treating when I was in California, actually. We moved to the Bay Area in Oakland, California, and there we used to come together as a family and it was interesting because we we used to have these Halloween parties that was very extravagant we had sleepovers and this was in the 80s and I remember one time my mom made this um, mannequin doll and she attached a string to it and she pulled it up and down where the other girls in the house couldn't see and they thought it was levitating okay and then in later years, uh, when we moved back to uh, Florida, and we began going trick-or-treating with our friends who we went to uh, junior high school with, middle school, it was me and my brother. And me and my brother would go out with the neighborhood kids, and we would go door-to-door, -door and we would collect chocolate and, and all the junk food and, and so forth, and have junk food for days, which is really not good for your health eating all that processed sugar but we didn't know any better but it, it was opportune to do you know things that were nice and we remember we went to a house and and actually we remember taking eggs and throwing eggs on people's houses and thought that was funny and you know it's interesting that the bible says that the hearts of men are desperately wicked who can tame it and you know the things that we perceived then it was funny to us at the time but now when we think back would we want that done to ourselves Would we want people throwing eggs at us and so forth that that is not nice also um, I remember we lived in these apartments when we lived in Orlando and above us we had those who were of the Wiccan religion and I didn't know too much about Wiccan religion <laughs> But they, it was a uh, Halloween or, and they called it uh, uh, Sante Sana or something like that. But uh, I think Sante means Satan, the day of Satan. And they said that they were going upstairs to um, having a, a fornication fair, meaning uh, having more than they had like all their friends come over and they would con consent to uh, fornicate with one another and drinking alcohol and so forth and so you know making occasions for this evil we just see these things modernized um, there's as um, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun Um, I believe that Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween because um, you already know the, the history behind it. It's from pagan religions, it's from uh, worshipping the spirits and interacting with them, which the Bible doesn't, uh, will completely discourage us to do. But um, if we talk about today, just the symbol, the symbolism that around it, um, just like the promotion of skeletons and which like promotes death or um, just ghosts which promotes like the interacting with spirits or them being around us and uh, even putting on costumes which kind of promotes not being yourself like being something else. Okay, Halloween's not really a good thing because it encourages spiritualism. And it also uh, allows you to believe in demons and spirits, and it makes all these things common practice and common knowledge, and it's really not as per the Bible. So it's a deception, and that's really not a good thing for a Christian. How does Halloween affect young children? That is a good question.
question. And the first thing that comes to mind is the behavioral aspect. You know, if you're dressed up to go to a really nice event, your behavior is going to be nice. Your posture is going to be nice. And so if you're a ghost or a goblin or even an animal for Halloween, your behavior is going to mimic that. That just stands to reason. The next is the health and the spirituality aspect to me. You know, a tremendous amount of sugar is being consumed by children during this time. And we know that an overabundance of sugar creates bad blood. Bad blood creates foggy mind. And a foggy mind is really terrible for spirituality. So right there you have your spirituality affected. And then there is the psychological aspect. You know, during this time, the sights and sounds heard all around on Halloween are very devilish. You know, you have the devilish laughter, the scary movies. You have the eerie sound, that, 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 that music. It's just really, really scary as well. So then you have the neighborhood displays, you know, that can be very scary. And the store displays. I know... I see a lot of children that are very frightened during this time, especially in the stores, you know. And so, and at home even, you know, there's a lot of memes on Facebook, uh, a lot of little Facebook, uh, little movies that show how frightened the children are. And I was thinking, I'm so grateful to have grown up FDA. We did not celebrate Halloween. In fact, uh, we read the history of Halloween. We also studied what the Bible said about witches and warlocks. And so our thing was to educate the neighborhood children as they came for trick-or-treating with the tracks. We passed out tracks. Um, because here's the thing. Halloween every year gets more and more commercialized. And why is it being so commercialized? It's to desensitize the children to satanic worship against the worship of the true God. During the Dark Ages, a number of pagan customs were adopted by the dominant Christian church in Europe. One of these was Devil Night, which was later named Halloween. This special night celebrated since antiquity as a night when the devils come out and walk about the streets was a satanic festival on October 31st of each year. The next day was called All Saints Day or All Hallows Day or All Souls Day. So Halloween was a name given to Hollow's Evening, or the evening before Hollow's Day. Like the night before it, All Hollow's Day was dedicated to honoring the dead. The Druids were an order of priests in Gaul, ancient France, and Britain. They were devil worshippers who told the people they must hold on annual celebration to their two leading gods, the Celtic Sun God and their Lord of the Dead. On this night, the God who brings death, Satan, was worshipped in a variety of peculiar ways. This October 31st festival was named Samhain or Sowin. Both are pronounced Sowin or Summer's Eud. The next day, the Sun God was worshipped. On the night of October 31st, they believed the dead came out of the graves and walked around. So they offered up sacrifices and had special feasts to honor them. The priest of Druid taught them that if they did not do this, when they themselves died, they would be reincarnated as animals instead of people. But pretended communication with the dead is the basis of spiritualism, also called spiritism which is one of the most dangerous practices in society, for it invites the control of demons. We should have nothing to do with anything connected with spiritism, and that includes participating in Halloween. The year 1517, October 31st, uh, a German monk by the name of Martin Luther, a Catholic monk, had um, come to the conclusion that some of the beliefs, or many I should say, of the universal church at that time, the Catholic church, were not biblical. So he put together 95 theses or answers to some of the church's beliefs um, in response to his Bible study, and he nailed them on the All Saints Church door in Wittenberg. So this was really the, the beginning of the birth of the Reformation. October 31st, 
1517, a man by the name of Martin Luther, he wrote out 95 theses, and he posted them to the front door of the Church of Wittenberg. And on these 95 theses, it was basically an exposure to Roman Catholicism and its teachings, that it wasn't lining up with the Bible. So he wanted to stand upon truth. He wanted to stand upon God's word and not man's word. And so this is when Protestantism was born. Protestantism is speaking up for truth. Protestantism is speaking out against Roman Catholicism and its teachings and standing upon God's word and not man's word. And this is truly what October 31st is about. And so in the old days, we see that people were giving themselves to uh, sin of the flesh and the drinking of uh, strong drink and wine. Uh, for the Bible says wine is a mocker and strong drink is a rage. Many who go thereby are not wise. And so when it comes to uh, the celebration of Halloween um, and understanding the history of these things, it does matter what you do. It does matter what you believe. And the reason why is because we must see that there is an angel behind the veil recording our every act recording our every word not so that we may fail but so that God may prove us righteous in taking the opportunity to obtaining the crown that he gives the crown of eternal life why would you taste something that is demonic and you want to slap the name of Jesus on it when Jesus ain't going to show up and bless your stuff you know, I mean, for me, if I, if I was a pastor and I'm going to do a, a celebration on October 31st, I would do a play to show how the evil and the dark side of what Halloween is and how is it that you need to come to the, to the cross of Jesus Christ for your salvation. I got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding Halloween. I, I mean, we talk about animal rituals. We talk about blood sacrifices. And Halloween, I had a demonic wedding because that is the devil's holiday. Situation. So the, one of the reasons Halloween is it's, it is you making soul ties, you making legal, you letting the devil own legal rights in your life. You can even as a Christian, you can say I'm a Christian and I love God, but you're cheating on him on Halloween. When you dress up for Halloween, when you dress up for this demonic holiday, you can dress as an angel, you can dress as like a little mermaid, you can dress as you know Casper the Friendly Ghost. When you dress up, you're giving the devil legal rights to change your identity. Another demonic reason, Anton Levain was a person, he was the, he, he was the priest of the Church of Satan out in California, and, and he, he was a devil worshiper for many, many, many years. He had 8,000 people in his church when he started the I'm not even call the church, his demonic building. And one of the quotes that he quoted, he said, I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their children at least one time a year to celebrate my holiday. And this is coming from the devil's mouth. So another reason celebrating Halloween is such a, uh, I would say, I would say it, it's such an eternal mistake. It's because you not only cursing yourself and you opening your doors to devils, whether you're, that, that means not, the devil doesn't own you. If you marry and you're celebrating Halloween, the devil owns your marriage. He owns your children, he owns your house, he owns your finances. That means he owns real estate in your life because you have opened the door to the devil one time of the year. I don't see how Christians want to be part of darkness. I don't see, one of the, another reason, I, 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 it's like saying, I don't see Satanist people saying, hey, John, Good Friday's coming. Can I come to your church? Could I come celebrate Good Friday with you? Because, you know, I, that's the right thing to do. I, I, am, I think that I should go there and celebrate the, 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 the finished work of the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to be part of that. I don't, hear them, I don't hear Satanists, you know, packing our churches on Good Friday. I don't see that. So why, well, why are we running and celebrating something that the Satanists are, are laughing at us?
Another reason, I see, I see, I don't know, I think that the, the whole key of, of Halloween is the demonic, the rituals, the celebration, uh, the, 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 the music, every, when you go to club, house party, or even, even sometimes we take Halloween and we take, we bring it into our churches. We dress people up as Noah, we dress people up as Abraham, but it, 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 is that really God? Is, is, is that really in the Bible? I mean, I understand you say we celebrate harvests. Yeah, well, harvest are so. I don't need pumpkins in my house. Pumpkins ain't gonna get me to heaven. And me putting pumpkins in my door and candles in my door, it's like me putting food in my door, but I don't want stray dogs to come to my door. When you put pumpkins in your door and you put you put candles and you put candles or you put these kind of, you dress up your house in Halloween, you call yourself a Christian, really? The reality of it, you telling the devil, you got legal rights over my house because I dressed it up, I made a contract with you, and now you're more than welcome to come into my house. That means you grieve the Holy Spirit, you grieve the things of God, you grieve your walk with God, and everything that God has for you, every blessing that God has for you, every opportunity God has for you, you just cancel your assignment. But I'm going to tell you from the devil, ex-devil worship for 25 years. You know, a lot of these candies that you, you give your kids and you buy in the stores in Halloween, they are prayed for. These candies are prayed for over the demonic people have prayed over these candies. They know what they're doing. They pray over these costumes. They know what they're doing. I mean, I live in the city in my hand, right? And they, and they rent the store, right? Every year, they rent the store. You know how much the rent in that store costs for the month of, 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 of October for them to sell costumes? $30,000 a month. How is it they got this kind of money to rent a store to sell costumes? These costumes are prayed for, they're demonic. And if you have open door to your children on this situation, on this demonic situation, circumstance, or celebration, or a holiday, they call it holiday, I call it demonic. If you have opened your door and you today, you see that your kid has waver, your kids have left the things of the Lord, your thing is no, your kids are no longer functioning in the, in the Holy Spirit. You need to repent, you need to renounce, you need to cut the rope, you need to give the devil an eviction notice and ask God, Lord, forgive me. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we destroy, we work our darkness, Father God, every bad decision that we have made. Father God, shed light in the hearts of parents and, and churches, Lord, today in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every stronghold, we break every demonic bondage, of Halloween, Father God. We said that we give the devil an eviction notice today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, right now in the Jesus Christ, every household that is under the, my voice today watching this video, it's not a coincidence. This is a divine appointment to cancel the devil and say yes to Jesus Christ over this demonic holiday. Lord Jesus Christ, set your people free. Open their hearts to see the demonic side of who Halloween is. And this is the devil's holiday. And we don't celebrate the devil. We celebrate Jesus Christ until he calls us home. In Jesus' name. Amen.